Love Jacques, it. let's maybe just start with the Springbok itinerary for uh, 2022. It was announced, or confirmed, we should say, a couple of days ago. You, I guess, would have known for some time. Three tests against Wales. And then, of course, we get into the Rugby Championship. Two home tests against the All Blacks. Wonderful for South Africa. Two away games against Australia. And then Argentina away and home. When you look at that itinerary, um, are, are you happy with the itinerary? Is it a good itinerary for you? Um, Joel, yeah, yes, I think so. I think if you think where we are currently uh, two years out before a uh, World Cup, um, I think you want some some uh, uh, tough opposition to test yourself, your players, your plans, your squad. And I think if you look at the, the, the games we're going to play um, this year, uh, and if you look at that itinerary, it's, it's quite a tough one. Um, I think of the eight teams we're going to play this year, I, I think four, uh, not think, four of them are currently, if you look at the world rankings, they're ranked number two, three, four, and five in the world. So, so basically, we're going to test ourselves against the top five in the world, which is good for us, like I say, a year out before a World Cup. Jacques, um, how do you manage, like, because we know South African players, there's lots of talent in South Africa. Some are playing overseas, some are playing in Japan, some are playing in Europe. How do you manage that? How, what has been the plans to put in place so that you can manage that scenario? Yeah, Bobs, I must say, uh, uh, things are quite uh, simple these days in terms of getting games. It's not like in the old days where your analysts had to swap. Yeah, it, they have to almost play games. Listen, I'll give you the Greek war game if you give me the Bulls game, you know. Uh, things are on a platform. You can literally go on a website and, and get multiple angles of all the games getting played all over the world. So uh, from, a, from a performance point of view, where we are currently in our planning is uh, probably doing performance analysis and, and, and performance management of the players. Mm. Um, we, we, you literally on the Sunday can download all the games and, and you can watch them during the week and you can track the players. And then from a player welfare point of view, obviously um, uh, we have good relationship with the coaches and the franchises within South Africa. But I must say, we also have good relationships with the clubs abroad. And uh, like we try and manage and look after the players' welfare when they are in camp with us, mm. uh, the franchise, uh, the, the, the overseas clubs are doing the same. Mm. Um, and not all of the clubs, but the majority of the clubs. And whenever players come and ask our advice in terms of uh, where to go to, and to, uh, uh, to, if they want to go and further their, their careers abroad, we will always give them good guidance and always uh, try and fo uh, point them in the, the, the direction of clubs that we have good relationships with. Yeah, Jacques, um, looking at your season last year, um, which aspects of your game would you like to see improvement um, this year going forward? Yes, I think um, we just did a proper review of, of, of our 2021 season. And I think, to be quite honest, I, um, I think I've said it before, um, I probably will give us a, a five, six out of ten. You know, I think there's lots of room of improvement. So it's just not one area. And, and we did a proper, uh, can I say, um, a, a look and a, a, a almost a reality check of all our high performance areas that, uh, that we are functioning on. And uh, there's, there's lots of room for improvement. Um, I don't want to go into too much specifics uh, because, like I say, there's a lot. I th and it's not, a, uh, it's not a, a, a six out of ten to get uh, uh, empathy from people. I, I honestly believe our squad is better uh, um, uh, and um, we are better than what we performed last year. Mm. And obviously the challenge is now to try and fix it in 2022, uh, build on it. Uh, I think there were some good foundations uh, that, that we laid down in 2022, I mean, thinking of where we came from, not playing any rugby in 2020. Uh, um, so uh, for us, it was getting back on the horse, trying to beat the British and Irish Lions while doing that, and then going to a rugby championship, getting used to bubble life for 16, 18 weeks, which which was a challenge, you know. So I think, uh, yeah, we, we there was good foundations laid for us. Uh, but yes, we they, this year will be... Um, uh, not, not a big year for us. It will be a big year for us, but a big year in the sense of laying the uh, building on, on what we started doing in 2021 with the, the end goal of 2023 uh, in mind. Jacques, when you say this year was a 6 out of 10, what, what would be your aspirations for this year? Would it be an 8 out of 10, a 10 out of 10? And, and what would that entail? Would it entail winning every test? Would it entail winning 90% of your tests? How do you set your goals? 
Yeah, I mean, if you look at last year, let me start with last year and maybe uh, give some clarity in terms of uh, how I get to a six in my mind. Is uh, there was probably there was the, the biggest thing for us was to 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 be uh, victorious over the British and Irish Lions because it's it's a it's an opportunity that only comes once every 12 years, you know, and it's a big thing, and uh, probably the biggest thing after World Cup. Uh, um, so that was important for us, and and I think we ticked that box, and then we wanted to. Uh, defend a rugby championship you know and which we fell short and and i and i felt uh, especially the the away leg of it uh, uh those four tests abroad especially the two ones against australia we probably didn't do ourselves justice and uh, then we wanted to fin finish the end of year to uh, uh, not losing you know and and we came one we came short with a penalty in the last minute against england uh, of achieving that and then i think probably the fourth goal was to to, to be consistent in terms of world ranking. So we're going into the year being number one in the world, try and fin finish the, 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 the end of the year being one, number one in the world again. That would probably be our, our four goals. Uh, while, uh, while doing that, uh, winning is important for us, but trying to, to get some squad depth, trying to get some experience into the squad, uh, uh, continuous with our transformation that we that, that we pride ourselves in. So I think this year, Joel, uh, will be the same for us. I mean, our strategic goal, uh, goals will never change. It will still be we want to perform, and performance for a national squad is winning. Uh, but with the three legs, you know, transforming, uh, uh, creating squad depth, and, and getting experience in the squad. Uh, so that will, uh, and we will do the same thing, you know, uh, uh, to say, uh, we will probably look at it the same way and then see, listen, okay, how much, how much boxes did we tick in terms of uh, 2022? So it's tough to say. Obviously, our aim was to get a 10 out of 10. Uh, um, but yes, we will see at the end of the year where we are. Jacques, just uh, one thing, you, you mentioned that you're looking for squad depth and you're looking for players to bring in uh, maybe new faces and all of that. How do you determine the criteria of a player that could fit into your squad? Um, yeah, Bob, from a rugby perspective, it's probably how he plays. You know, uh, we, uh, what, we, what, what we're currently doing uh, in terms of performance management and analysis on players, we literally look at every single action they do during a, the, during a game, every carry, every tackle, every clean out, every contest in the air, every scrum, every line out, every delivery, every pass, every catch every kick you know so we we go in detail in, into into every action of the players and and, and that's why we, we we literally takes us a week to go through through the squad we are currently uh, uh looking at and 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 scanning um so from a rugby perspective it's it's to look at his fundamentals uh we yeah. we, we don't mix and meddle into this uh, their styles and their uh, strategies and their game plan but just literally looking at their fundamentals which is uh, which is 100 percent under their control and then uh, other than that is listen uh, uh, does he fit into um what we deem to be a a, a, a good springbok you know so so uh, how a guy plays rugby and what you guys see and what the public will see on Saturday is, is probably the 12th thing that we look at in terms of team selection. Uh, and that's why we have the alignment camps, is to, mm -hmm. to align players. Listen, when, when we look at uh, uh, selecting a squad, these are the things we look at. If we look at, a, at the mindset of a springbok, we, we want to see a warrior. We want to see a disciplined player. We want to see a player that takes ownership. It's not just him playing well, but he takes ownership of the team around him, you know, and his team is prepared. Uh, it, it is uh, does he have an ego and and that we see when we visit franchises we speak to the coaches uh, you speak to people that work with him uh, uh, is he a player that 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 has uh, that that puts in the effort during the week but he does it with a good uh, enjoyment you know he stills enjoy what he does or is he a player that that has the enjoyment but he lacks the effort you know so yeah there's a lot of things that we look at but that we pick up through uh, visiting the franchises visiting go and look at games uh, and sometimes we get allowed to be in the change room while they play the URC game so we can see how they handle off-time talks when they are down, when they are up. So, yeah, there's a lot of ways that we that we yeah. u utilize to see if a player will fit into a structure or not. Brilliant. Yeah, Jacques, you talk about uh, criteria about selecting your squad. Um, looking at your squad now, do you have any concerns, like position concerns, um, if there's any injuries or loss of form? Yeah, um, definitely. I think uh, uh, if I look at our squad, uh, the one thing I must say about our squad, I, I, I hear 
uh, even my friends will tell me, listen, are you looking to get some new faces in? And, and we, we definitely, they, it's, it's a blank canvas. You know, we, we, we started in 2018, the same time, two years out of a World Cup. So it's a blank canvas for everybody. So, so everybody playing Curry Cup, URC, we are looking, uh, uh, like I say, in detail uh, or, or in depth at, at all the games currently getting played. And uh, um, uh, the, the, I would say I don't want to go into too much specifics where we are in trouble in terms of where, where we think we, we need to look a little bit harder. But uh, I had a, a nice conversation with the selectors uh, during the day and, and we've got our ducks in a row in terms of what we're looking at. Uh, but yes, I think um, uh, if you look at the, the, the current age bracket of our squad, we, we are fortunate enough that the average age of our squad that we used last year is around about 27, 28 years. So they will probably be 29 when we when we hit the World Cup in 2023. But I, I think the one thing uh, um, that people sometimes, or my friends, uh, sometimes uh, um, get uh, confused with in terms of age, versus experience. I think it's quite an experienced squad. Uh, uh, we, we've got over 1,300 uh, caps within the squad. So they're not old in terms of age. They they experience. So I think the challenge for us is not to just to get young players in for the sake of getting young players in, but it must be players that are good enough and that will serve the team and that will add value to the team. And, and, and I must say, there's a lot of, if I look at the URC currently and even the players playing abroad, there's a lot of guys knocking hard on the door. Shark, sure, I know we're running out of time here. We've only got about 90 seconds left, but very briefly, we, we've got Wales coming up this year. We've got Ireland and Scotland in our Rugby World Cup um, pool next year. Are you, play, are you putting a close eye on the Six Nations? Are you watching with much interest? Yeah, uh, definitely, uh, Joel. We... we um... Yeah, I, have, I did a proper analysis on the games that got played this weekend. I'm currently uh, finishing the, the France-Italy game, uh, but, but the other two are, are done in detail. Uh, yeah, like you say, uh, we, are, we are playing uh, Scotland, who just put away England two times in a row, and, and we're playing uh, uh, um, uh, Ireland in our pool matches. So for us, for me personally, I think we must, uh, when we talk about World Cup, focus on the pool games. That's, that's the key for us. You know, we can't even think further than that you know to get out of the pool is going to be a big challenge and it's almost uh, uh, you, you mustn't balloon yourself into the into the future too much you know so uh, yeah for us it's focusing on, on on getting out of the pool it's going to be a nice challenge for us super Jacques well it's uh, it's always wonderful chatting and we really appreciate your time and uh, thanks very much for joining us we've unfortunately run out of time which we'd love to have you for another 15 minutes because we it's, it's wonderful hearing from you. It's wonderful hearing about the processes and the challenges you face. And, and best of luck. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a test season that is yeah. going to be unbelievably exciting for all of us, and in particular for you and your squad. Good luck, and thanks so much for joining us tonight.